Uh, in this lesson, we're going to be looking at aggregate supply, uh, and this is going to be a shorter video. Uh, then we're going to go into a little bit more in depth. But uh, so for this one, we're just going to look at uh, describing what aggregate supply is uh, using a diagram why the curve is an upward sloping curve, and this is going to be the short run aggregate supply. We'll distinguish between uh, short and long run uh, a little bit later. Don't know how to just click there. Uh, then we're going to look at uh, what happens when aggregate supply shifts, the short run aggregate supply shifts, and what causes that. Uh, and then we'll probably stop the video at, at that point, and then we'll uh, do a couple, then we'll do another one that's going to be a little bit longer dealing with supply. So anyway, uh, let's uh, go ahead and start talking about aggregate supply. Just like aggregate demand, <coughs> the, again, the term aggregate, or to aggregate, is to sum up, or to collect and add together. <coughs> And so when we looked at aggregate demand, it was simply the summation of all the individual demand curves for, for all the goods that are bought by uh, consumers and businesses and governments and net export or the, the net export component. And so when we look at aggregate supply, aggregate supply is simply the summation of, uh, that's terrible. Aggregate supply is simply the summation of all of the supply curves in a country for all the products that consumers buy and governments buy and businesses buy and then the net export component. So uh, when we draw this curve out, we're going to draw this upward sloping curve. And so if you remember, we have a PL for the macro graph of PL there. The PL stands for price level. It's a measure of uh, the general level of prices. And so if we're moving up, generally say we have inflation. All right, going down, we have deflation. And then quantity is on the x-axis. And so remember, that is quantity of GDP. And this is real GDP. All right. And so aggregate supply curve simply says that if prices rise, and this looks real similar to the supply curve, as the price level rises, then producers in aggregate will provide more stuff for us. Now, this is in the short run. All right. And there are a couple of assumptions that give us, you know what, uh, that give us uh, this slope. Because when we switch to the long run, it's going to be a little different. So let's go ahead and call this the short run aggregate supply curve. All right. Now the question is, why is it an upward sloping curve? And there are a couple of different answers. The biggest reason here is this idea of profit. All right. That if, con if producers can charge more for their product, then uh, they will charge more. And they'll get, as, so as the prices go up, uh, they're willing to, to give us more. So let's take a, an example. Uh, and we're going to pull one, one producer out of the macro economy and pretend that this is happening to all the producers. Because, again, this is a macro graph. We're not looking at the supply of one product. But uh, you'll kind of get the idea. So uh, let's say we have uh, the birdhouse maker again. So there's a birdhouse. Ooh, not a good birdhouse. So here's our birdhouse. Uh, and so let's say that there's, there's two costs for this birdhouse maker, all right? You have uh, material cost and you have labor cost. And so let's say that the materials cost $10 per birdhouse and the labor costs $10. And so total cost equals $20. And we're going to charge, let's say they're able to charge $40 for the birdhouse. It's a good birdhouse, strong, withstand the weather. Uh, and so our total profit is going to be how much? All right. Well, they charge 40, they get 20 for it, and so their total profit is 20 dollars. All right. And so let's say that uh, that inflation ha hits in the United States, and it hits the birdhouse industry as well, and it's really bad inflation. So prices go up by 100 percent. All right. Let me make this a little bit clearer, uh, so there's no confusion. These are the materials. Yeah, that helped. All right. Uh, so prices go up 100%. And so what do we know is going to happen to uh, the cost, what we charge for this? That is going to double. So that's going to become 80 bucks. All right? So we, we're just assuming, again, 100% inflation, which is dramatic, but to, to prove the point. So 100% inflation. And so now, let's say that uh, you were the birdhouse maker, and you had uh, signed a contract with Lowe's. To buy wood, all right, and you said that you would buy it, and the the, the wood would cost ten dollars per per birdhouse, and you signed this contract for a year, 
all right and this you signed it last month and so uh, what's going to happen to your materials cost still doesn't look right sorry what's going to happen to your cost of materials when inflation doubles but you have a fixed contract with Lowe's or Home Depot whichever you prefer or a smaller company so uh, what's going to happen to this ten dollars when the inflation doubles and the price of your birdhouse goes up to 80. Well, actually, it's going to stay the same because you signed this contract with Lowe's and you're pretty happy, okay? And so they have to give you the stuff at 10 bucks. Same thing for labor. Let's say that you have workers and they all signed a contract for a year. All right? And so they're stuck at 10 bucks for each birdhouse. And so your labor is going to be $10 as well. And so the total cost is still $20, but what just happened to the total profit? Okay, we're charging 80 because prices doubled, and these prices stayed the same because they were under a fixed contract with the suppliers. And so the total cost is 20, so now our total profit is $60. Now, you should be saying to yourself, well, that's 60 bucks, but remember inflation doubled. And you're right, if inflation doubled, then that $20 would be equivalent to $40 later. And so, as you can see, if we're getting $60 later as opposed to the 40, then we're actually ahead of the game. And so this is why in the short run, as the price level rises, producers are willing to provide more and more and more in the short run. All right, now, what's going to happen when, let me just get rid of that, what's going to happen after the year has passed and these contracts come up for renegotiation? All right, everybody who's working there Okay, he's going to say, look, the price of everything has doubled. You can't pay me $10 an hour again. All right, I can't, I can't survive off $10 an hour. And so they're going to say, you know what, we need $20. And Lowe's is going to look at you and say, we're not going to sell you the $10, wood for $10 anymore. Prices have doubled. Our contract is now going to be for $20. All right, and so when we rework this, in the long run, what's going to happen to the, the total output uh, of the economy and so if this is twenty dollars now and this is twenty this goes to forty all right and now we're selling it sorry for the mess we're selling it for this eighty dollars still and so our total cost is forty the total we're charging eighty and so now our total profit is forty dollars and so remember they were charging twenty now it goes to forty with when inflation doubled the purchasing power of these two are the exact same and so everything goes back to the beginning but that's in the long run, all right? In the short run, it's simply that as the price level rises and there are fixed contracts, right? That big, and remember that, it's a lot about fixed contracts with suppliers, either suppliers of labor uh, up here or suppliers of materials here. And that's what gives it this upward slope uh, for the short run, all right? Now, let's look at this next one. Uh, explain using a diagram how the aggregate supply curve in the short run can shift due to those factors and so we would call those the determinants of aggregate supply so let's get another different color here it's not quite so light all right and so again this is the price level and this is the quantity of gdp real all right and here is the short run aggregate supply and so the, the general rule of thumb here is that if anything happens in the economy that costs a business money, then it's going to shift the aggregate supply curve to the left. We're not talking about specific business, but businesses in general. Uh, if something happens in the economy that saves businesses money, then that would generally shift the aggregate supply, shorten aggregate supply curve to the to the right. And so let's go over these. Uh, they talk about changing resource prices, and by resources, who are we, what are we talking about? Uh, the resources for uh, work would be land, labor, capital, and entrepreneurship. And so if any of these prices change, all right, if any of those change, then uh, let's say resource prices go up, all right, nope. then it's become more or less expensive to run a business. And so if you have to pay your labor, you know, 50% more, then that's going to decrease the supply, the short run aggregate supply curve. Uh, what if capital becomes a lot cheaper, all right? that's going to increase the short run aggregate supply curve. All right, so we'll call that three, one, and two. All right, so that's changing the resource price, changing business taxes and subsidies. 
All right, so what do you think a tax does uh, to a business? If they jack up corporate tax rates to 50%, all right, what's going to happen to the short run aggregate supply, this initial one? And if they jack them up, to, up that high, if they raise business taxes, it's going to be costlier for businesses to do business, and so it's going to shift the short run aggregate supply curve left. Conversely, if they do a subsidy, which is basically the opposite of a tax, they give the companies money, uh, that's going to decrease their cost and shift it out to the right. Uh, then we have things like supply shocks. Uh, what if we have a drought and a large part of our, our crops are destroyed? Uh, you would shift it this way. Uh, if we had the, the best season ever, the best growing season ever, uh, it would shift it that way. So, I mean, you can try to remember all these little ones, but just keep in mind that if if it costs businesses money, we're going to shift that aggregate, short-run aggregate supply curve to the left. And if it saves them money, it's going to cause the short-run aggregate supply curve to shift to the right. So uh, we'll go ahead and stop it there. And in the next video, uh, we'll look at uh, all this other stuff. All right. Till then.